Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, colleagues. Mr. Speaker, I stand to support the motion presented by the Minister for Finance in this debate on the estimates of revenue and expenditure. Before I do so, Mr. Speaker, I wish to join all my colleagues in welcoming back our colleague from Castries Southeast, and I also I also continue to wish him well, and hope, Mr. Speaker, that his recovery will continue. Mr. Speaker, this debate is about the estimates of revenue and expenditure, but essentially, this debate is about the Minister for Finance and the Member of Parliament for Castries East. When all is said and done, Mr. Speaker, the judgment about the performance of the Member of Parliament for Castries East, when all is said and done, the scrutiny of his performance, when all is said and done, his own words will be what will go down in history. And Mr. Speaker, though I don't want to quote him directly, he says very often that he's not a showman. He does not, he prefers to stutter the truth than to speak lies eloquently. That his duty is to make St. Lucia a better place, and his responsibility is to lead a team of men and women who will ensure that we use the taxpayers' money properly, carefully, and diligently. I support the Member of Parliament for Castries East and our Prime Minister. And my presentation today speaks to his diligence, and I applaud him, Mr. Speaker, for beginning the great job and very important job of digging St. Lucia out of the hole which we got it, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this budget, the, the, the estimates of revenue and expenditure indicates that we have a primary budget surplus. And what is it, Mr. Speaker? $29 million, if you have to look at, if you look at the budget summary, Mr. Speaker, a primary surplus of $29.5 million. And what does, what does that mean? A surplus, Mr. Speaker, occurs when tax revenues are greater than government spending, excluding debt interest payments. This means, Mr. Speaker, that under the watchful guide of the Minister for Finance, the Prime Minister, we were able last year to collect tax revenues, pay our interest, our debt interest payments, and at the end of the day, we are left with more money than we spent in the amount of $29.5 million thereabouts. This has not happened in many, many, many years, Mr. Speaker. Right. Mr. Speaker, sa premier ministre mufe avec les nous garder toutes ces limoa qui manier gouvernement dépenser l'argent l'année l'année ça là. Nous ka wè ki nous ni plus l'argent passé nous amasser après nous payer toutes dépenses nous espèrement les nous payer interest sur les dettes nous. Et nous ne pouvons pas faire des choses pour un chai, un chai, un chai l'année. Comme ça, le ministre des Finances, le Parlement, le Castries East, le Premier ministre, le Kamoutchoué, qui est un lettre de Jean-Pierre cette ici, avec qui a fait le travail pour tirer nous en difficulté que nous jouons le dernier gouvernement à nous mener. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire, Mr. Speaker? Ça veut dire que nos finances were effectively managed. The primary budget surplus 
even though we had so many difficulties, Mr. Speaker, we still kept our social services. In fact, we improved on our locations to social services. More support with subsidies, whether it be for fuel and, or for flour. Investment in, in businesses. Mr. Speaker, I applaud the Member of Parliament for Castries East. And I will come back to some of these figures later. When I speak on the agency which I was tasked to manage. But before I go there, Mr. Speaker, I want to relate the estimates of revenue and expenditure to the constituency of VA for North and to explain to honorable members how these estimates impact my constituents and how we are hoping the 23-24 budget estimates will benefit the people of VA for North and invest in them. Mr. Speaker, I want to take just two, sec two minutes or one minute to explain to you, Mr. Speaker, where I come from and why it is so important for me to connect the estimates of revenue and expenditure to VA for North. And I want to tell you why I feel so passionate about the representation which I try to, to give to my people and why I'm going to continue to work hard to ensure that the provisions in the estimates benefit the people of VFO North. I come from a very fascinating constituency, Mr. Speaker. It's filled with passionate people and punctuated by natural physical beauty throughout the communities of VFO North, whether you are in Grace, Bellevue, Vijay Kako, whether you're in Opico or Savans Bay, whether you're in Piero, wherever you are, it's a beautiful place. The people of VFO North, Mr. Speaker, gave me the glorious opportunity to represent them with the St. Lucia Labour Party in the Parliament in December of 2006. And that's very important, Mr. Speaker, as I connect it to the estimates. In December 2006, I represented the people of VA for North. And that representation, Mr. Speaker, was after the largest runoff which has ever taken place in the history of St. Lucia. In August of 2005, I, the, the St. Lucia Labour Party put me through a runoff with other individuals who were interested. And I gathered over 1,250 votes in a runoff. That year, Mr. Speaker, we lost government. Even though the people of VA for North and the St. Lucia Labour Party won the VA for North seat. And listen to that, Mr. Speaker, and I want to connect it to the estimates, why I'm so passionate about this thing. In 2006, the VFO North seat, we won the VFO North seat by the largest margin of victory if you have to take into account percentage, not numbers, obviously. So from day one, I have been struggling with my people five years in opposition, from 2006 to 2011. Then in 2011, Mr. Speaker, we again won the seat with the largest margin of victory again, even though Sir John Compton won the election. Go check it out. But four and a half years was spent in government, between 2011 and June of 2016, four and a half years. In 2016, again, we won the seat, but went into opposition. So when I speak about these estimates today, Mr. Speaker, you will understand that while I came into parliamentary politics in 2006, we've been in opposition from 2006 to 2011 and from 2016, and four and a half years between 2011 and 2016, four and a half years in government, and then 2016 to July 2021 in opposition. It means, therefore, Mr. Speaker, that as a 
Member of Parliament, I have had the opportunity to be in government to represent my people for about six years now. Four and a half years and this period here. This is very important, Mr. Speaker, because I want to create the context within which I'm going to speak about these estimates today. And every time we were in opposition, the first time, 2006 to 2011, the government of the United Workers Party ensured that the people of the North were squeezed, were squeezed. And the evidence is there. I am sure, Mr. Speaker, my other colleagues can say the same. Denry North, Castries South, Viewfort South, Castries East, and the others. Squeeze. Mr. Speaker, in July of 2021, under tremendous and deliberate targeting, and I will show it to you in the estimates, under tremendous pressure and deliberate targeting, the people of Vietnam North held firm and once again put their faith in me and the St. Lucia Labour Party, Mr. Speaker. So all of these years were spent in opposition. So all of the estimates of revenue and expenditure during those years in opposition, Mr. Speaker, we were deliberately targeted and victimized by the United Workers' Party. And just like the widening deficits of their budgets which they left, our government has had to close the deficit. And that is in the very same way, Mr. Speaker, I am going to work hard to ensure that within these estimates, I work with my people of Vefo North, the Prime Minister of this country, and the Cabinet to close the deficit of development which is in Vefort North, Mr. Speaker. And that is what I'm going to focus on in the estimates. So when they come into government, Beaufort North is, is not part of the country. Mr. Speaker, these estimates of revenue and expenditure will assist me to report to the House and to the people on how I intend to close that deficit of basic physical development with the support of my Prime Minister and my colleagues. Let us look at infrastructure, head number 43. Our major roads, Mr. Speaker, I mean roads within our major communities that are in Grace, Canals, Vigier, Tupiero, Bamboo, Bellevue, Vevacel, Zabo to Bellevue, and several farm roads and community roads. In several instances, Mr. Speaker, these roads are not even portholeable. They are not even portholeable. And now, no matter what I said to them, when we were in government, Mr. Speaker, we started the rehabilitation of at least some of the major roads. Over the last five years, some of the projects which should have assisted us were stopped by the last government. The Q80 Secondary Farm Roads Project should have been implemented and the areas of, of Woodlands and Bois de Mang and all of these areas in Grace should have been built. That project was stopped by the last government. And so, Mr. Speaker, over the last financial year, we started to close the deficit. Very small closures of the deficit in the constituency, but we started, Mr. Speaker. If you look at Head 56, Project 0079 CDP, you'd notice, Mr. Speaker, that the Constituency Development Program addresses a number of small community concrete roads and so on. Again, I wish to, I want to refer to my days in opposition. When we were in government, Mr. Speaker, in 2011 to 2016, we started several roads under the CDP. We completed a number of them, and by the time elections came, individuals had contracts in their hands, contracts to complete the projects. When the United Workers Party came to government, they stopped the projects. So you have a concrete road, and 
contractors have actual contracts in their hand, and the government stop it. So for five years, you have the Back Street Road, you have Mr. Nickel Road in Bellevue, you have the Jabatis Lane in Piro, and so many of them for five years, these roads were stopped just there. Started and stopped. I want to report, Mr. Speaker, that all of the roads which I mentioned, except Mr. Nickel Road, which is going to start soon, we have completed in the last financial year, under Head 56, CDP, we have completed the back street road around the Grace Plain, Plain Field, Mr. Speaker. And the contractors who had their contracts in 2016, when UWB came, they stopped it. I ensured that they got back their contracts, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Asha Ishime qui nous a commencé, là nous avons gouvernement, le dernier gouvernement a vini, yo doubouti. Alors on s'est estimé de ça là, l'année l'argent pour continuer à de ces chimères là. Mais en dernière année, nous avons commencé ou en jeux affaires pour finir ces chimères là. Chimères qui a passé bon fil gras, yo doubouti a été doubouti. À présent, nous allons continuer à bas head 56, Mr. Speaker. Also, Jabatis Lane is currently being constructed using CDP allocations and several other drains in the constituency. Mr. Speaker, in 2022-23, Head 43, a number of community roads were also constructed. Bellevue Vebercell, Perino, Aldonza Lane, and other, other roads. We also have the, the Teva Road on the head 52, Mr. Speaker. The Teva Road at Grace, which was stopped again by the United Workers' Party. And what was very interesting, Mr. Speaker, that is where the leader of the UWP, former Prime Minister, that's where they started the campaign in VFO North. Because they said that is where my family is from. So they deliberately stopped the roads. And that is where they went to start their campaign. So you know, that's where my family is from, and I didn't finish road for them, and everybody's voting for them. They give everybody a yellow shirt, and they're having a big party, and so on. They forgot the thing about blood is thicker than water. So what did we do? If you go to Teva now, Mr. Speaker, you will see that this concrete road has been completed under Head 56, Mr. Speaker. Asuka Air Road, if you go there today, you will, you, will, you will possibly see tractors and so on. We are completing the Asuka Air Road at Grace. Opico Community Roads, most of them have also been completed. So Mr. Speaker, this is what I talk about when I speak about closing the deficit of development in the constituency of VA4 North. I move to Head 56 which has to do, Mr. Speaker, with the 10 million MSME loan grant facility, Head 42, and also Head 42 small businesses, commerce. I welcome this, Mr. Speaker, the $10 million, and we have over 150 small businesses in our area, several of them. Um, you already know Kenya from, from Bellevue, the people at Piro doing craft, at Grace, at VJ, several small businesses, I don't want to list all of them, but there are several of them, Mr. Inns doing mixology, all of these people, Clint Mitchell, and a number of them into studio and so on, all of these people are looking forward to accessing these facilities, and they're already applying for these facilities. So this will benefit VA for North. I really like the digital, digital enhancement program on the Head 42. And this is a very important program, Mr. Speaker, because we need to incorporate the digital economy into the small businesses as we move forward because there is no other way to go. On the head 46, culture and creative industries, tourism, community tourism is very important to us, Mr. Speaker. I know that there is, I know that there is still a lot of work to do, but I have spoken to the Minister for Tourism and hopefully we can start work on the construction of performing two performing areas in VA for North. We know that the we know the history of Bellevue with the performances 
And also, Mr. Speaker, I am in discussions with the Piero Combined School to use the yard as the first open air performance area in, in the Piero area, Mr. Speaker. And just to tease you a bit, we are going to start this off with Piero Combined School Jazz, and you'll hear a lot more about that in the next few days. No soleil. So, Mr. Speaker, we are looking to, to build two open air performing areas at Bellevue and at Piero to begin, and the others will come afterwards. Mr. Speaker, we are very fond of arts, arts perform, well, perform, performances in the arts, our tours to waterfalls, the nature tours, agritourism. There are several farmers who are interested in agritourism. And we have um, Camp Venture at Bellevue, for example, a young lady who has a, a nice product which she's developing. You can go there to camp. And Nina Compton, Chef Honorable, you see, Excellency? Nina Compton was, was there not too long ago. So we have these facilities, and I know that the community tourism um, on the head 46 will assist. We also have the first honey, the first solar honey factory in St. Lucia by the Horizon, Horizon Brothers of Grace. And we have groups like Yelp and other organizations. I know they will certainly benefit from the community tourism. The establishment of other activities like mini festivals. I spoke about Jazz in the Imperial School. Support the reestablishment of the Belvi Carnival in a very unique way. The Vijay community had a wonderful cassava industry. They have a wonderful cassava history. And we, even there, Mr. Speaker, we're hoping to use community tourism to revive this, and also emancipation. Mr. Speaker, Head 54 speaks to sports. And the people of VFO North, as you know, we are well known for, for sports, for whether it be soccer, cricket, um, athletics. And Head 54, Mr. Speaker, speaks to community playing fields. And I know that the people of Bellevue have been waiting for the community playing field. They would, they, I'm sure many of them know that the funds were received in late February, and the Ministry of Youth um, is now mobilizing to do the surveys and to get the, the Bellevue playing field organized. It is late, but we got the funding very late, and, but this project is still on stream. The other community playing fields, we have been working with the, with the Department of Crownlands to ensure that we demarcate the boundaries of these playing fields, like the, the VJ playing field, the Monkine playing field, and Invest in Lucia for the Grace playing field. Because we find, Mr. Speaker, that over time, individuals start to encroach on the boundaries of the playing field. They begin to plant dashing and yam and everything around the playing fields. Um, we want people to grow food, but at the same time, food security, but at the same time, Mr. Speaker, we do not want, when we are ready to build our our facilities and so on that we are in conflict. So we are working on this. I see an increase of 30% for, for elite athletes on the head, 54, Mr. Speaker, and 1 million for the semi-professional league. Mr. Speaker, I'm very happy because we have many athletes in VFO North, but one stands out, Naomi London, who's an elite athlete and I'm hoping that we can get even more support for her. She's about to travel very soon. Even more support for her and her family so that they can, we, we, this young lady can reach her full potential. There are others, there are cricketers and so on. So this head excites me. Mr. Speaker, Head 52, Education, Innovation, Vocational Training. I'm excited about line item 0328, the Human Capital Resilience Project. Mr. Speaker, that's very important. Transferring the secondary schools into technical vocational institutions. I think, Mr. Speaker, this is important not only for my constituency, but for the whole country. We need um, a push in that direction to get more skilled individuals, young people to, to go into, into these skills, and I look forward to my constituents benefiting from it. Line item 0251, under the same head 52, Mr. Speaker, major repairs um, and rehabilitation of schools. It is not there this time, Mr. Speaker, but 
you, you will crave my indulgence, Mr. Speaker, for me to just throw in a little early word, maybe for the next year or two, so that my colleague can remember the Piero Combined School. Well, we have spoken about it. He has gone there several times, unknown to me, Mr. Speaker, to take pictures and so on. So I know he's interested in, in the Piero Combined School. So I thank him for that, Mr. Speaker. So, yes, and he has several photos. So, I look forward to the repairs to, to our schools. The Grace School is, is an aging plant, and I know the minister will give us the support. In sustainable development, Mr. Speaker, line item 0073, integrated ecosystem management and restoration of the forest on the southeast coast. The southeast coast also encompasses Viewfort North, um, has some stake to the southeast coast, Mr. Speaker. I notice we have a, what may be a very impressive hotel going, going up um, at Canels. This, this is really Viewfort North, Mr. Speaker. There have been a lot of um, confusion about whether this is Viewfort North. And also the, the, the ecosystem on the southeast coast is very, very important. The mangroves in the Savans Bay area. Savants Bay going up to Prale, um, going up to Canals. This is Viewfort North, and we have some wonderful um, ecosystem there, dive sites, and, and at the same time, CMOS farmers. And how do we manage? How do we create a system, Mr. Speaker, which can cause farmers and divers and people who are doing kayaking and so on to coexist? And we have the Savants Bay Fisheries Facility, a perfect opportunity to, to get more employment. A number of people are employed there because of the CMOS, but it's a perfect opportunity for more employment if we have a sustainable um, system there, and I like under the, the, the member for Denry North, the integrated ecosystem management is very important. Head 56, Mr. Speaker, the Department of Economic Development, the youth economy, extremely important. And a number of young people from VF4 North have been applying to the youth economy agency and we are, from the level of the constituency, Mr. Speaker, we will be providing some support because a number of these young people, yes, they want to apply, but they need people to help them with the business plans. And I promise both the youth and those who are applying to the MSME that we will I'll provide that support, get a few professionals, pay them, and have them assist them with the business plans. Because we want our people in VA for North, Mr. Speaker, to, to become independent. There are several of them, they have businesses. If you go around the constituency, Mr. Speaker, and you see the number of, not just young people in VFO North, so many people. I've said before in this house, that's the place you get the best wraps, the best fish wrap, the best chicken wrap, the best pork wrap in VFO North, in the Opico, Bellevue, Grace area. People leave castries on a Tuesday and go to Grace to get the best food, Mr. Speaker. If you have not gone there, Mr. Speaker, I know you, you may not know Viewfort North very well, Mr. Speaker, but if you, if you don't, I invite you to the constituency, Mr. Speaker. He knows Suzel. So we, and he, <laughs> I invite everyone, Mr. Speaker. So we have a number of, of businesses in Viewfort North, and I'm sure they will benefit from this, from CMOS processing to craft, and um, there are some developments there which, which are very, very important. So, the youth economy, we look forward to the benefits of the youth economy. And Head 56, the Department of Economic Development, the St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project, the CDP, as I said before, but another very important one, the Street Lighting and Replacement Project. Mr. Speaker, this one is a very critical one, and I'm sure not just for me, but for other colleagues, the street lighting issue is a very important one, Mr. Speaker. All around the constituency, we have um, lights, um, lamp poles, the lights have gone bad, and it's a safety, it's also a safety issue. And I know the government is trying, the Minister for Finance is trying to get this resolved, but my constituents are clamoring for improved street lighting. Um, some areas come to mind, like when you leave Zabo to Bellevue, the area of Larry Twet going to um, um, Miel, a, a place we call Miel, where um, the father of Anderson, Ren Anderson Reynolds is dad. He, he had a lot of beehives there sometimes, you know, a lot. So this whole area 
is dark, and many areas in Vieux for North. So I think the head 56 street lighting replacement project is very critical. I move to head 51, Mr. Speaker, the Department of Equity, Social Justice, and Empowerment. The Human Capital Resilience Project, where we are looking at the public assistance um, program, coverage of the poor. And I'm sure this is not just for View for North. When you go around the country, Mr. Speaker, you get so many more elderly people who need assistance. So many more elderly people who, who, who want to go to Comfort Bay, that their relatives want, can take care of them. Some people are overseas and so on. I think this is critical. And our government putting put in people first, Mr. Speaker, care for the elderly and care for the, the, you know, the people who are, who are challenged is very, very important, and I'm, I'm impressed by this allocation here, Mr. Speaker. The home care program, $7.8 million, on the head 51. I just wish, Mr. Speaker, we had the funds to employ more home caregivers. And I have said before, I think, the, I know the Prime Minister agrees to that. Maybe not this year, maybe next year, maybe when we can afford it, we can just continue training home caregivers. We may not have enough for saying, you know, we may not, we may, we, may, we may have too many in one year, in, in a year's period. But Mr. Speaker, this is becoming a demand, not just in St. Lucia, but around the Caribbean and around the world. I know several individuals who got trained as home caregivers in St. Lucia, and they are now working in Canada. They are now working in the United States of America. Look, two of them told me they're going to, to Miami because they have certificates and so on. I'm not sure the last government did it like us. Proper training, CVQs and all that kind of thing. I'm not sure. But Mr. Speaker, that is very important. The home care program is very important. It's a flagship of the Labour Party and we must continue it. Line 0466, crime and violence interruption. $150,000, Mr. Speaker. Very important. So the Minister for Finance has allocated a total of 11 million in social and economic support on the head 51. That is a, this is a government which cares, Mr. Speaker. The Member of Parliament for Castries is, again demonstrates that despite the challenges, we will allocate 11 million dollars in social and economic support. Head 58, Department of Housing and Local Government, Mr. Speaker. Again, the recurrent issues. The PROUD program at OPICO. I am pleased, Mr. Speaker, that we have a little more speed because I note that the surveyors are on ground in OPICO. They have been in OPICO for a while, doing the surveys and so on. And I continue to encourage the people of Vie for North to refrain from squatting, Mr. Speaker. We are trying to rationalize so that everybody gets their, 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 their pegs and their lot and your, your land paper, however you can pay it, however, go to the bank and however little you can pay it. But the squatting, the continuous squatting is a problem. I understand, Mr. Speaker, many years ago we had a serious issue, people. There were no systems in place. But now we have a system in place. Okay? With proud and, and, and the ministry. So the squatting issue is a serious one. And I want to say this in the House to so all those people of view, from the who are listening to me. Mon, the hill, Mr. Speaker, above Opicon. Many people believe this is government land. And so people are starting to put little plywood houses there. Ça pas tel gouvernement. Mais ça dit mon ça. Over and over again. This land does not belong to the government. And the owners of that land, when they come to claim their land, people come to my office and tell me, Hey, Musa, I'm going to take a buy. Money take a buy, Messi. Money take a buy. What we are trying to do is to assist those people who squatted some time ago on government land, rationalize the land. So, si vous êtes à Kawete la cometan, pour aider ou, pour jouer une terre, mais nous ne pouvons pas aller à la tête mon opicon et dire ça c'est le gouvernement. Ça n'est pas le gouvernement, Messi. Laissez-moi nous venir pour nous, nous avons un problème. Non, je veux dire ça, Mr. Speaker, parce que ça va créer un problème. Donc, parce qu'ils sont rationalisés, ces quarters où ils étaient avant, 
people believe they will also get the land. No. So I, I want to make that plea. Let us work with those who are there already. And the member for, for Castri Central and his ministry, they are, they are, they are working to, to cause that to be achieved. The National Housing and Assistance Program, in 2022, Mr. Speaker, we were able to build a few houses for some elderly people, some people who are sick, and so on, and the people of here for enough know who these people are. I don't need to, to go through it. And we are able to assist many people with house, house, housing repair. The demand is very high. I don't know what we're going to do this year. But the demand is very high, but we are going to focus on assisting the most vulnerable. Nous ne pouvons pas acheter un chat et l'argent pour manger toutes ces cailles-là, mais nous devons faire qu'on nous paye dans les salaires. Je suis très heureux, Mr. Speaker, avec le 0086, Head 51, Local Government and Community Projects, 1.5 million, the councils, Mr. Speaker, je sais que les councils vont recevoir des aides. Et le Vieux Fort Nord Constituency Council, ils ont beaucoup de programmes et ils sont vraiment en train de soutenir le soutien. Et. The caretakers program, Mr. Speaker, project. I see two million for the caretakers project. I'm very pleased to see the return of the caretakers project because anytime we have a stimulus program, a lot of our time is spent cleaning alongside along the roadsides and so on. So the caretakers project will help. And I know many of you are looking forward to that. Head 41, agriculture and fisheries, very important to the constituency of Vefo North. I know the expansion of food, the food crop production, the cocoa sector enhancement. We have many people from Vefo North who are into cocoa processing, cocoa production. There are so many of them from Bellevue, Peru, Greece. Everywhere we have people. Munki Gafe Kako, Pinkako, Puvue, Martinique. Pinkako pour vous et l'autre pays, vous avez petit Pinkako, go Pinkako, jeune Pinkako, vous avez des Pinkako, et Canel, tout ce bail ça avec Miscad, tout ce bail ça a sorti vieux for north. And they make, they, 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 they are creating those beautiful packages to export, Mr. Speaker. We are going to give these people support to push, to push. We are going to give them support, Mr. Speaker. I am excited about the, the primary tillage equipment mechanization by the Ministry of Agriculture. This is going to assist farmers um, with their cost of production and so on. And, and I love the banana management unit project. I know there is an, an increase this year. Many of our farmers in, in VFO North, we still have many banana farmers in the, in the Grace area, the Bellevue area, and, and Canels, just to name a few areas. We have many farmers there who require assistance. And as the Minister for Agriculture said, Mr. Speaker, the, our, our bananas are in demand. And if our bananas are in demand, what we need to do, what, what, he, what the Minister is, is doing, is to help our farmers so that the cost of production can, can be lowered. Mr. Speaker, I want to spend the rest of my time, which is about 45 to 50 minutes, I think, Mr. Speaker, by my watch. I'm just joking. I want to spend the rest of my time to speak on Head 53, which is the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. Mr. Speaker, in 2022, 23, our recurrent budget was $182,808,400. There's a, there's a, a variance, Mr. Speaker, of $1 million over the approved estimates. Why is this so? Why did we come out with, with, with more money than the revised, Mr. Spe sorry, than the approved estimates? Mr. Speaker, it is because $296 was provisioned for the payment of salary increases to the staff at the St. Jude Hospital, Mr. Speaker. We didn't leave them out. $296,381. $296,381. We also assisted the procurement unit with $100,000. And the Ministry of Finance assisted us with another $700,000 to the office of the Chief Medical Officer for the payment of medical assistance to the public, Mr. Speaker. We wish to thank the Ministry of Finance. Going forward, Mr. Speaker, you would note that our recurrent 
recurrent expenditure in 23-24, the, the coming year, will show a $10,200,000 decrease. And why is that? It's because, Mr. Speaker, the COVID-19 project, you will recall the COVID-19 project, actually took a big chunk of the estimates. And this year, the COVID-19 project would not occupy so much um, room in the estimates, so to speak. You, and when I speak about COVID-19 expenditure, we're talking about supplies, we're talking about provisions, we're talking about stationery, and so many other articles, Mr. Speaker. You would note also, Mr. Speaker, that in 2023-2024, we are increasing the consultancy vote to $29,319,762, a 234% increase. Because, Mr. Speaker, we are providing for salaries, salary allowances, wages, and so on, for the respiratory consultancy vote to transfer personnel to the Owen King E Hospital and the new castries, um, the, the new um, polyclinic. But I'm just listing them. During the policy debate, Mr. Speaker, we'll say a lot more about that. We are moving ahead with the transfer of the Castries Wellness Center to the urban polyclinic at Victoria Hospital, as the Minister for Finance indicated. We are also making provisions for um, $4.5 million for the employment of Cuban nationals to assist us, nurses and doctors and so forth. I'm extremely excited, Mr. Speaker, that provisions for the new universal health care project, maternal and child services, provisions were made in the amount of $1.8 million. And I am so excited about that, but not the excitement will not manifest itself today, Mr. Speaker. I will explain all of that. No, I'm <laughs> I'll explain all of that in the policy debate, Mr. Speaker. We, we, we also made provisions for consultancies under the St. Jude Reconstruction Project and also for the transition of the St. Jude facility. So we are not just talking the talk, we are putting money because we know that there will be costs which will be incurred to transition St. Jude. So we have allocated for that. Mr. Speaker, and here is another exciting thing in the, in, in, in the estimates. A 10% increase of $7 million increase in grants, contributions, and subvention over the, 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 the revised period in 2022-23. A $3 million increase in the subvention for the St. Jude Hospital, a $3.6 million increase in the subvention to the Millennium Heights Complex, OKU, and so on, $10,000 increase for the Diabetic and Hypertensive Association, $20,000 to cater for the Childhood Development Center, $10,000 to the Autism Society, $20,000 to the Cerebral Palsy Association, $300,000 increase to cater for additional medical assistance for individuals who, are, who have challenging circumstances. Mr. Speaker, at this point I want to say, we note the request for others um, for increases like the Planned Parenthood and elderly care homes and so on, but these we will continue to discuss, but we want to assist all organizations who do their work in the communities. Mr. Speaker, I want to speak again to Head 53, the, the capital. The job est estimates, Mr. Speaker, re reflect a positive variance of $10.5 million in the capital, a 281% increase over last year. Why is this so, Mr. Speaker? Why is this so? This is so because the Minister for Finance has kept his promise and has indicated that our focus will be on security and health and therefore in the capital we see $1 million for the establishment of the urban polyclinic, $1.3 million for additional rehabilitation of the St. Jude Hospital at the stadium because there are things that are breaking down all the time, $1.8 million for the upgrade of the deteriorated hot water system at the mental wellness complex. $500,000 for the reconstruction of the Larissus Wellness Center. 
$500,000 pour vie bâtir la ressource wellness center. Under the health system strengthening project, um, refurbishment of the oxygen plants and also equipment. We also providing for $1.7 million for the purchase of equipment and that is health centers throughout the country. And also $3.9 million to finalize some payments for building an infrastructure under the COVID-19 project and so forth. Mr. Speaker, I'm very pleased with the allocations that have been made by the Minister for Finance to the Department of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs. If we are to look, take a cursory look at some of the performances, Mr. Speaker, the estimates of revenue and expenditure would, would normally speak to your rate of implementation. And some of our areas um, which, which we have responsibility for are, for example, the OECS Regional Health Project. And the implementation rate so far, Mr. Speaker, is at 44%. The Health System Strengthening Project, last year when we came, the implementation rate was 7%. This year, the implementation rate, Mr. Speaker, is at 95%. 95%. So a lot of work has been put with, with change in structure and, and management and so on. And I wish to, to, to thank the officers for, for the work. The St. Jude Hospital in relation to monies which were allocated early last year for some changes at, at the hospital in some equipment, not equipment, but infrastructure and so on. That initial sum of $1.5 million, 100%. Technical cooperation, the implementation rate, 72%. And the COVID-19 response, the implementation rate, 98%. Mr. Speaker, it is very clear that Head 53, Ministry for Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, there are several, there are several bright areas. We have our challenges, Mr. Speaker, but I, w I really want to thank the Permanent Secretary and the staff and my Secretary and all those in the hospitals and so on who are working very hard to ensure that we reach our, our targets and, and, for, and our goals. Before the North, you have 10 minutes left. That's fine, Mr. Speaker. Thanks. Mr. Speaker, I just wanted to say to you that um, under the, the economic development portfolio, the St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project, it's, it's there, it falls there. But, but I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, last year that a number of achievements were, 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 were had. We had many achievements um, at St. Jude in terms of the expenditure and, for example, the removal and reconstruction of the East Wing canopies costing 126000 the rehabilitation of the inventory warehouse, costing 384,000. Redesigning and rehabilitation of the triage, um, triage, sorry, booths, and so on, another 33,000. And works ongoing, Mr. Speaker, to complete the rehabilitation of the emergency room resuscitation bay, and a lot of other things, Mr. Speaker. The, the out, outpatient walk-in clinic, the security office, the eye clinic, bacteriology department. Um, supplying furniture to the departments at St. Jude and, and so forth. I mean, we, we can go through this, Mr. Speaker, and you can see in every department um, the health system strengthening project, supply of vehicles, supply of essential medical equipment, supply of equipment for communication, supply of universal transport medium, medium kits, supply of pharmaceuticals, supply of lab equipment, all of these were successfully achieved. Mr. Speaker, universal health care is moving forward and moving forward very quickly. Very quickly, Mr. Speaker. I wish to thank Dr. Alicia Eugene Ford, the Permanent Secretary, her whole team, and all those at the ministry who are pushing the CMO, the strategic team. Um, and I just want to tell you just a few things. We are currently drafting the white paper and this white paper will give us a road map. And there have been white papers, um, draft white papers and so on. There have been documents before. But we have included professionals from St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Many of the professionals who worked on UHC before, 
We have included them in our, in our health financing discussions. So what have we achieved? A number of them. Drafting of the white paper, the health, the health financing policy. We had um, a World Bank group and the Korean Partnership Agency. We had a, a very important workshop on the international knowledge exchange in health financing. Um, a team is leaving St. Lucia very soon to go to South Korea to continue this, this work. The essential package of health services, Mr. Speaker, it has been reviewed and final work on it is being done by an actuarial consult consultancy firm. Um, mental child health services, sorry, maternal child health services will be launched in May and there we have provision in the budget for that. And what does that mean? Our dream, Mr. Speaker, is that when we launch the maternal and child health care services, that any lady who becomes pregnant will get a number of services without paying up front or without paying out of pocket. So the ultrasounds and so on, a number of them will be part of the Universal Health Care Initiative. Training has been done, a number of, of training sessions for midwives and so forth. We are also working on the registration and issuance of health cards and the advice is that we should do it in a phased way. So as we are doing maternal and child health care, you will see us going into giving health cards. So when you go to the hospital and so on, you have a health card that you can swipe. It will say you are St. Lucian, you are this and that. And it connects all the, the IT services so the doctors can know what to do and give you your treatment. Mr. Speaker, cancer screening and early detection, we are hoping that by September, September of 2023, we are going to announce a major, um, a major initiative in there. And the cancer registry, Mr. Speaker, I know that um, one of our doctors, the head of the St. Lucia Cancer Society, Dr. Remy, is very passionate about this. And we are going to work to, the, to develop in a cancer registry. We have our communication plan. We have a, a universal health coverage unit. And the activities are moving very smoothly. In the time left, Mr. Speaker, in terms of the achievements, what did we achieve? I want to also tell you that we established our biomedical workshop at Victoria Hospital, and I can also report to you, Mr. Speaker, that 31 different categories of biomedical equipment were repaired in the last financial year, Mr. Speaker. We are focusing on biomedical equipment which need repairs and biomedical equipment we, the biomedical equipment which we are purchasing, Mr. Speaker, we want to ensure that the parts, we can get parts easily and so forth. Because as I've said before, a lot of the problems we have with equipment at our hospitals and health centers and so on, is because we, we have expensive gifts and we do not have people who have the regular training to maintain all of them. So what we are trying to do is to develop a cadre of, we have a few, one or two, to develop a cadre of trained individuals to take care of the biomedical equipment. What can I tell you about the Millennium Heights Medical Complex? The work that the board is doing and the, and the, and the team in administration, it will take you 40 days and 40 nights, Mr. Speaker, to tell you all of the work they're doing. We know that the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, we have severe challenges, especially in accident and emergency. People go there, and they stay there for a very long period of time. Somebody has a bus tow, they're two footing them at midnight, so they end up at the accident and emergency section of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. We are hoping that this will be cured, or at least in some measure, when we implement and institute the, the urban polyclinic. And hopefully we can make it a 24 hour urban polyclinic eventually so that the pressure on Millennium Heights will be reduced. Millennium Heights Medical Complex is reviewing all of its financing um, models without increasing the charge at the hospitals, at the hospital, without increasing the charge, hoping to be more efficient. They are working on the oxygen plants. They are working on the backup generator. They are working on, on having a 24-hour pharmacy service, and they are recruiting pharmacies as we speak. 
Um, the St. Jude Hospital is recruiting pharmacies. So, Mr. Speaker, what, what I want to tell you is these estimates of revenue and expenditure, apart from it demonstrating that the Minister for Finance knows what he's about, he's not talking like he's a guru or boasting that he, he has the best management and he, whatever. He, he walks the walk. He brought us a surplus on the primary account, Mr. Speaker. Surplus. He also paid all of our obligations. The salaries to the public servants, the increases, the back pay. And we had a little issue at St. Jude Hospital, Mr. Speaker. Nothing to worry about as such. It had to do with the timing. The St. Jude workers would have received their back pay in June. And a number of them felt if the other staff members were receiving the back pay now, why don't give them the back pay now? And I know what it, what it feels like when you don't have your back pay yet. And so, Mr. Speaker, the board quickly met with them and agreed that let's do something. Let's give you half. It's 4%. Let's give you half in April and half in June. And they agreed, Mr. Speaker. So we, we can't be vexed with them, Mr. Speaker. Back pay is back pay. People want their back pay. And be, there's an agreement for June. But the board, I thank them for talking to the workers and getting things organized. This Labour Party government is a workers' government, Mr. Speaker. Everything we do, we, we come out of the workers' movement. We are workers' government. So we'll do all that we can, all that we can to ensure that our workers get their due and the revenue of estimates and expenditure demonstrate what the Prime Minister intends to do. My constituency, Mr. Speaker, have explained to you that I, I am confident that these estimates of revenue and expenditure will benefit my constituency. Say, Mowaki and Libsala at the Defoe Department, Mokai Deshle Shle, Libsala, avec Ashe Tan, who are nous jouons une activité comme ça en vie for North. Nous jouons à dernière année, mon cas, oui, merci, Premier ministre, avec l'autre cas, il So I thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support the estimates of revenue and expenditure, the motion as presented by the Prime Minister. And I will give the Prime Minister my full support, Mr. Speaker, with the rest of my colleagues. We are going to boost the health sector. We are going to work together. And this government will succeed. It is succeeding. And we have put the people first. And we'll continue to put the people first. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.